gentlemen, welcome back to my channel. It is me, Evan Comics of the Comic Book Fiend Club East Chapter, and welcome to the second ever episode of Cosmic Spotlight. Now guys, today's episode means a lot to me and really tugs on my heartstrings because as opposed to spotlighting an individual comic artist, writer, actor, or movie, we're gonna be spotlighting an entire imprint of comic books. This publishing imprint meant the world to me growing up and it is Milestone Media from DC Comics. Milestone Media was founded in 1993 by a coalition of incredible African-American artists and writers by the names of Dennis Cowan, Michael Davis, Derek Dingle, and the late Dwayne McDuffie. Their vision was simple. Bring the underrepresented minority population to the forefront of the comic book world. Taking place in the fictional Midwestern city of Dakota, Milestone's four initial launch titles were Hardware, Static, Icon, and Blood Syndicate thus creating their own universe within DC, the Dakotaverse. Hardware was their exoskeleton-powered superhero. Curtis Metcalf, a disgruntled employee and brilliant engineer, deals with the themes of institutional oppression and exploitation. Milestone founder Dennis Cowan has gone on record saying he relates to him the most. Static, on the other hand, was their teen book, where wisecracking Virgil Hawkins receives electricity powers in an explosion at a gang war called the Big Bang. His book dealt with themes of everyday teen and family struggles as well as day-to-day -day racism. Icon, my personal favorite, was their Superman-esque book that has an alien crash land on Earth in slavery times and live on to become and take the form of a conservative African-American lawyer dealing with themes of power and responsibility. Blood Syndicate was Milestone's team book, with a twist of it being a street gang. A mix of many, many races, all their members received various powers in the same explosion as Static, dealing with themes of survival, loyalty, and respect. With these new characters, Milestone tackled what every other comic book publisher out there was afraid to touch even with a 10-foot pole. Not just racism and diversity, but things like LGBTQ representation, teen pregnancy, and drug addiction for Christ's sake. This very, very quickly earned my respect as a young reader and opened up my mind to all the different things that are out there. Milestone later added many other titles and crossover events such as Cobalt, Zombie, Shadow Cabinet, Heroes, Death Wish, My Name is Holocaust, Why Son the White Wolf, Static Shock Rebirth of Cool, Long Hot Summer, and Shadow War, all leading up to a huge Milestone DC intercompany crossover called Worlds Collide where Milestone heroes fought alongside DC powerhouses such as Superman, Steel, and Superboy, to name a few. Suffering from low sales, Milestone unfortunately had to shut down their comic book publishing division in 1997, but they still saw amazing success with the Static Shock TV show for Warner Brother Kids. I adored that cartoon, and many others still do to this day. Static was voiced by the popular voice actor Phil Lamar, who is also responsible for the voice of Jon Stewart in the Justice League cartoons and countless other animated characters. In 2008, it was announced that Milestone characters would be received and merged into the DC Universe. Examples of this integration included Static joining the Teen Titans, Icon, Static, Rocket, and Hardware appearing in the Young Justice and Young Justice Outsider shows, and the 2011 New 52 Static title. A 2010 two-issue miniseries called Milestone Forever was also put out, taking place in the original Milestone universe that put a cap on the Dakota characters and tied up loose ends in their fabled chronicles. It wasn't just the characters and their cool powers that made me love the Dakotaverse. It was the depth of their stories, the power of their diversity, and their incredible relatability. This brought my imagination to an unmatched emotional level, and still to this day, I am amazed every time I flip through those pages of those amazing titles. It was everything a young man like myself growing up in Puerto Rico needed. Reading Milestone made me feel like a unique puzzle piece in what is the beautiful mosaic of the United States and the world. Instead of escaping into a comic book, these stories escaped into the real world and eventually into my life. Here are some clips of what Milestone means to fellow nerds, collectors, cosplayers, and geeks of all kind. I hope you enjoy. Milestone Media was the first comic book company to introduce its readers to a world of respect, inclusion, and most importantly, diversity. No other company has come close, not even to this day. Thank you, Milestone. Milestone Media to me is history. Um, it means respect and culture. 
is real. Out of all the comic books, Milestone's universe was real. Milestone Comics was simply groundbreaking. Uh, what it means to me is creativity, diversity, and most importantly, representation. What do I like about Milestone Comics? Need I say more? What's going on, Bias Webster style? It's hard to say just one sentence about Milestone, but Milestone was the only comic book company that had characters that looked like me, lived in a city that was just like mine, and I was about at that time the same age as a lot of those characters. So they spoke to me in a way that no other company could. I have some CGC graded books here in my personal collection from Milestone that I would love to show you guys before this video ends. So let's get right down to it. Here's hardware number one, the Platinum Edition. I submitted this myself, came back at 9.6, was very happy about that. This is just a beautiful book. I could look at this one all day. And here we have hardware number three, signed by Dennis Cowan, Milestone Media founder. I love the purple background on that one with Edwin Alva on the cover. Here is from the Capstone two issue miniseries, Milestone Forever, the number one from that two issue miniseries at a 9.8. God, this one is just beautiful. And we have a whole bunch more. Here is Static number one, the collector's edition. First appearance of Static at a 9.4. Three different covers exist. They have the regular cover, that collector's edition, and then this platinum edition. This one is signed by Derek Dingle. It's a qualified grade at a 9.2. Here's the platinum cover that they have, just like the hardware one. And here is a really good one, guys. This is a 9.6 of Static number 45. I believe it's 45, yes. And it's the last issue in that series. This is a cover by Mobius. So it's very beautiful, and I love the pink colors. And this is just my favorite cover from that entire Static run. We have a few more here. This actually is the last one we got. It is Worlds Collide number one, CG Seed at a 9.6, signed by Dennis Cowan, Michael Davis, and Derek Dingle, all founders, just, with, just missing Dwayne McDuffie, may he rest in peace. And we have, it's signed by Romeo Thangal as well. I really could just look at this one all day. I really could. And that does it for episode two of Cosmic Spotlight. I hope you all had a wonderful time. A very special thank you to Night Mage, who is an excellent cosplayer, Webster Style, who has a great podcast called the Sartorial and Geek Podcast. Also a very special thank you to Barry, Damon, Alex and Kunta for participating and sending in their own videos on what Milestone means to them. All members of the Milestone Comics Facebook fan page. I hope you all have a wonderful day, afternoon, evening, night, wherever you may be in the entire world. Just remember to collect what you love. Milestone forever. I hope you make a quick return.